Your Royal Highness, Mr. Commissioner, Excellencies, Madam President, dear friends. I'm Dagfinn Høybråten, Secretary General of the Nordic Council of Ministers, which is the international organization of the five Nordic countries and the three autonomous areas in the, in the Nordics. And I'm here to uh, share what I think the Nordic region can bring to the table uh, in the aspects of what we're discussing here today. The days when Nordic food was known as heavy meat-based stews are long gone. Today, Nordic food is associated with simplicity, sustainability, and uh, season-based products. How did this come about, and how can this way of thinking be used to address the challenges of nutrition, climate, and urban development? It all started in 2004 with a cooperation between some creative Nordic chefs and innovators wishing to change the Nordic food culture, nothing less than that. An initiative uh, was supported by the Nordic Council of Ministers, among others, uh, and uh, the result has turned out to be a radical change in the Nordic food scene. A decade later, we are witnessing a very prominent trickle-down effect to the way people look upon food in the Nordic countries. A genuine and holistic new Nordic everyday diet is shaping up. A diet to which both nutrition and sustainability play a more prominent role. We're witnessing uh, an important democratization of good and sustainable food in the Nordic countries. The Nord this new Nordic everyday diet re resonates with the Nordic nutrition recommendations which is a common Nordic approach, which has existed since 1980. Uh, and uh, uh, these uh, are tools helping policymakers to implement appropriate food policies, such as nutritional guidelines, front of pack labeling, and not at least to establish strong trust-based partnerships between governments, NGOs, and the food industry. Just want to show you these are the Nordic nutrition recommendations as issued in 2012. Not specifically digital in this issue, but it is, it is also uh, online. And, and, the, and the good thing about it is that this, these are uh, scientifically based recommendations. We have a common Nordic monitoring system. We know to the extent uh, of which people comply with the recommendations, and we can adjust policies according to the monitoring system. So it's an interesting case that we're, we want to, to share with the rest of the world. And it now in integrates also physical activity, which must not be forgotten in the equation uh, when, when talking about the, uh, some of these uh, huge uh, health problems uh, on a global level. As in most of the world, the Nordic countries have not been able to completely stop the epidemic of overweight and malnutrition. However, compared to most other developed countries, the Nordics have managed to slow down the rise of overweight and obesity, and is showing some important signs of improvements in the diets. Surely, the nutrition recommendations play an important part in this. Consequently, the, Nordic, the new Nordic food movement, although not so new any longer, together with the Nordic nutrition recommendations, are important parts of the Nordic approach to the challenge of sustainable urban food systems. Our uh, Nordic Prime Ministers discussed uh, last fall, what can we bring as a Nordic region, to, uh, as, as Nordic solutions to uh, global challenges? And we identified three areas, and one of the three areas is food and nutrition. So it's been decided among the governments that this is an area where the Nordic region will try to contribute to the solution of some global challenges. Based on our own experiences, with the traditional Nordic humility, that we, we don't have seen it all, but, but we, ha we think we can contribute some. The municipalities are central. The municipality of Copenhagen has recently issued an, a declaration of intent of cooperation with some rural municipalities in, in Denmark. There is a great demand from the city uh, on innovative and sustainable foods from rural areas, and this brings sustainable growth and jobs to rural communities. Innovative partnerships between cities and its rural surroundings uh, are win-win uh, possibilities for creating a more environmentally, socially, and economically sustainable food system. Another important part of the democratization process 
is approximately 5.5 million meals that are served daily from more than 55,000 public kitchens in the Nordic countries. In Sweden, for instance, since 1st of July 2011, they have written into the Education Act that all school meals should be nutritious. In Copenhagen, 90% of ingredients in all public meals are organic. Oslo and other Nordic cities also have ambitious goals around organic public meals. This is very much in line with what the, uh, the commissioner talked about uh, was necessary. The Nordic food movement has turned out to be a driver for change and policy, a policy tool. Uh, through citizens' energy and entrepreneurship, cities can bring radical and sustainable changes to our food systems. And these examples from the Nordic region highlight how cities can be engines to transform the food culture and the food systems in a whole region around the cities. But the Nordic food journey is far from over. We will continue to uh, dem democratize good food in the Nordic countries through strengthening Nordic cooperation between uh, these Nordic change agents. And we're now in cooperation with EAT, uh, proud to uh, announce uh, establishing a Nordic Cities EAT initiative. The Nordic cities have recently uh, all started to prioritize uh, food policy in a new way, and we will help the cities learn from each other, discover new solutions, continue the dialogue on the Nordic experiences with a global audience uh, connected to the, the wider global network that was mentioned by, by the commissioner. And in the coming years, this will be done as a part of the Nordic Council of Ministers Prime Minister's uh, initiative, as I told you about. In my own personal uh, experience as a uh, Minister of Public Health of Norway and as a uh, chair of the Gavi Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization, I have learned a couple of things that I think is uh, useful going forward. I, believe, I strongly believe in uh, knowledge-based policies. It needs to be scientifically based. We need to have clear goals. In order to reach them, they have to be precisely defined so that you can know if you have reached them or not. Uh, thirdly, we need to endure. We need to stay on the message. We need to stay on the strategies uh, in, in order to reach our goals. And I believe we are on the track to do so. Thank you very much.